most of us would know how to help if we saw someone. Having a heart attack, we will start CPR, or at the very least, call the emergency hotline. But too few of us would know how to respond if we saw someone having a panic attack or if we were concerned that a friend or a co-worker might be showing signs of depression. Mental Health First Aider is a helper who provides support to a person who is developing a mental health problem, experiencing a worsening of an existing mental health problem, or in a mental health crisis. Mental Health First Aider is trained to identify, understand, and respond. Many people are not well informed about how to recognize mental health problem, respond to the person, and seek help. We need to end the stigma and discrimination associated with mental health problems as there are many myths and misunderstandings about it, and professional help may not always be available. So, when the sources are not there, Educity introduced Happy, the first mental health first aid kit in Malaysia. Happy Kit was introduced to increase the chances for early intervention among Educity Skandar students and staff, which can result in a fast recovery. Happy Kit contains flashcards with important information and contact numbers, eye masks, stress ball and earplugs. Now, we are introducing Mental Health First Aider. As a Mental Health First Aider, we are taught to recognize people's struggles, to look out for the signs, triggers, and symptoms, and find out how to guide a person towards appropriate treatments and other supportive help. Imagine, in the workplace, the certified staff will increase awareness of mental health issues, helping staff communicate and be open, and foster a positive working environment. Imagine, in a student community, they will have a point of contact if they are experiencing emotional distress or suffering in silence with mental health problems such as stress, anxiety or depression. Mental Health First Aider is trained to identify, understand and respond. And we need to make Mental Health First Aid a skill essential to our frontliners as common as CPR. For EduCity community, if you need us, do reach out to us through our email here. For EduCity Village residents, you can find me at EV office should you have any questions to ask. Don't suffer in silence. We are here to help. We can do this together. Hashtag kita jaga kita. Hashtag EduCity jaga kita. This is where it begins. A place where she can dive into her dreams and swim against the current to reach her goal. It is a starting point of a journey to explore uncharted territories, to use new knowledge for the best of mankind, Immersing in sustainable lifestyle where you can feel the breeze on your skin. It's times like this that makes you feel alive. A time to create. A time to capture precious moments.
where dreams are no longer just a dream, but the beginnings of a new reality. This is where I harness my potential. This is where I explore possibilities. This is where I expand my mind. This is where her story begins. This is EduCity. And hello everyone, welcome to the Jumpstart Your Career Talk or JYC Talk by EduCity. I am Iman and I'll be your MC for today. A warm welcome to our participants and viewers today who are watching EduCity Series 5, Jumpstart Your Career Talk stream live both on Zoom and EduCity official Facebook. Thank you for participating in today's event. So today's session will feature Ms. Adeline Agurgani, the Director of Marketing Comms of Aurelius Healthcare as the speaker and moderated by Ms. Raja Yasmin, the Vice President of Comms and Branding at Edusti Iskandar. So Ms. Adeline and Ms. Yasmin will take you on a deep dive on the topic of Pave Your Path in Digital Communications. Our speaker, Ms. Adeline, has grown professionally as a healthcare marketeer over the past 14 years, and she has pioneered many first-of-its-kind business initiatives, which has contributed to brand exposure, market expansion, and revenue growth for the organization she worked with, um, including KPJ, um, Glen Eagles, Kuala Lumpur, and Davita. Ms. Adeline used various business to consumer marketing strategies to foster the growth of business content development and maximize brand awareness through integrated marketing communication. So last year in 2021, she was handpicked by Aurelius Healthcare to lead the marketing and corporate communications for the group and its hospital. So a little bit of um, insight on digital communications Digital communication refers to the ways in which people communicate through a digital platform. Um, it also shows how it connects people with online branding. So before digital revolution, professionals use TV, print media, radio, and even billboard to advertise their brand. Nowadays, those channels are still important and legit. But email, social networks, and blogs have gained precedence as ways to connect um, to prospective customers. So, career in digital communications can be found in various areas, such as social media coordinator, mobile journalist, media content creator, digital media writer, and the list goes on. Interesting, right? So, for our viewers in both Zoom and Facebook platform, we would like you to encourage to be active in this session by interacting with us in the comment, comment section and keep posting your questions in the Q&A box. So without further ado, I will pass the session to my colleague, Yasmin, as our moderator for today. Over to you, Miss Yasmin. Hello, hi Iman. Thank you very much. That was um, a fantastic opening by um, our MC Iman, who is also in comms. Um, so for your information, guys, my name is Yasmin. I'll be moderating today's session with the topic of Pave Your Path in Digital Communication. Um, so I think a little bit, um, I summarized a little bit about what the MC did during the opening. She kind of gave an explanation about what digital comm is. So let us go back to basic of, have you ever wondered who's responsible for those, you know, targeted social media ads that you are, you know, scrolling through. Example, if you are looking for a car, suddenly out of the blue, all the ads about cars or whether it's secondhand car or first car just popping up. You know, all those people are really um, um, responsible for all the kind of information that you have, you know, from your mobile phone, from your uh, from your internet surfing is uh, basically called digital, uh, basically called digital comms. So if you're interested in breaking into the field of digital communication industry, now is the right time to explore this field. And because there's a rapidly increasing demand in the job market, 
for people with digital market. Now, I'm so honored today to be with Ms. Adelaide Abdugani. Iman did a great job of introducing her. So I'm going to go way back before she said she has 14 years of you know, experience in the marketing field um, because I know her when I was very young. Uh, my family just moved to Langkawi and both our parents are best friends. But what I had seen her um, you know, being a small town girl, we both are small town girls from Langkawi Island. Um, she, she transformed into this um, fantastic corporate figure who trailblazes in the corporate comms industry. And that is something that really wows me. And I really would like to get an insight of her experience and all the tips and guidance that she can share with you in terms of your career choice if you were to choose digital communication. So without further ado, I'll be introducing Miss Adelie Wild. Before that, I think we have a polling question that is going to be pop up on the screen now for all the Zoom participants. Um, shall we have the polling questions now? All righty. Okay, everyone, JYC Series 5, Faith Your Path in Digital Communication. Why did you attend this JYC Talk Series? You may choose more than one. And then the second one is, for your information, which social media platform do you think is the most informative? Okay. I think uh, we shall have the results soon. We shall be having the results soon. So guys, less than five to 10 seconds, just pick up your choice. And then we kind of, uh, basically all your answers. Um, okay, I think we are waiting for us to summarize all the fantastic list of participants. Okay, I think we are waiting for um, the answer. So, Miss Adeline, um, I think I was just telling everyone that we know each other since way back in Langkawi. Um, perhaps you can share with us, what were the first, um, so after you finish your SPM, um, what was the course that you took? Did you already know that you want to be in, um, digit, uh, sorry, in comms? Um, hi, okay, so not really. Um, actually, because um, at first, um, there, there are a lot of uh, things that I want to become when I grow up. Um, so first, uh, pilot, and then doctor. And then after that, I think, because I, I kind of like, um, you know, designing and on the creative side. So I, I, I took up uh, multimedia, mm -hmm. um, the course. Yeah. So that's when, and, and I learned a bit of um, advertising, promotion, um, TV production. But back then, um, digital com, you know, it was, it was so not, different it was from not today. A thing. It was not a thing um, at all. No Facebook, no Instagram. Yeah. But we do have MySpace and Friendster. <laughs> yeah, but, but it was, even that, that, that was like, um, it was so purely for social after, networking. Right? It was yeah, purely yeah. for social networking. Um, we don't think that um, those who uses the internet back then were so used to all those uh, type of uh, digital advertisement. We were yeah, very no. traditional on TV. It was on radio. It was on print. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So I think we're still waiting for the first polling question to get an answer. And I think it will be interesting to know um, that uh, so basically, guys, for your um, everyone out there, uh, if I'm not mistaken, today's uh, participant consists of um, students from um, uh, secondary school, also uh, consists of um, students from higher education. So, thank you, Mesh, for joining us. We hope that today's topic is very much sliced and diced and catered to your understanding of what uh, career in communication is. Um, so, I think we do have one more polling question before we can invite Miss Adley to start. Oh, okay. 
So basically, these are the answer. Fantastic that 59% is here to learn about digital comms, um, while 57 of you wanted to know more about digital comms. And I think most of you guys agree that um, the most informative, um, sorry, the inform informative is uh, face, uh, sorry, face, uh, sorry, others. Um, so I think LinkedIn was set and Twitter is said to be one of the highest, um, apologies, Instagram is said to be the most informative in terms of uh, social media platform. Um, and it's very interesting, interesting because there are other uh, questions that's coming in that we will be uh, giving this, um, what do you call that, uh, answers to the polling, the results of the polling to me settling to summarize that word. So basically, for the first and second question, I'm telling you guys, thank you very much. 59% is here to learn about digital comms. Well, the questions about Facebook says, hey, uh, Instagram is the most informative. Okay, so let's deep dive into it. But first, let me again uh, invite Ms. Adeline um, to start your presentation. And then guys, please stay because we have a Q&A session afterwards, all right? Sure. Thank you, Yasmin. So before that, let me just share my screen. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, a uh, very interesting answers we got here from the polls, and um, thank you, uh, Yasmin, and also Iman for your kind introduction. So for just for your information, um, yeah, as uh, Yasmin mentioned earlier, um, Yasmin is someone that I know from school, but of course she's much younger than me. So we kind of grew up together in Langkawi and we parted ways after we left school. So we lost touch for many, many years and guess how we reconnected. Yeah, social media and um, it is part of digital communications. So gone were the days when um, social media or digital communications were only for fun and entertainment, we can now make money out of it, if you know how. So, uh, well, I'm not here to teach you how to become an influencer because I'm not one, uh, but I'm here today to share some insights on how to build your career in digital communications. And as you know, I'm Adeline, um, Adeline Abdul Ghani, Director of Marketing and Corporate Communications at Aurelius Healthcare. And over the years, I have worked with my team to increase market shares for the companies uh, through various integrated marketing campaigns. And also, I thank uh, EduCity for having me here today to share some of the insights with all of you on building your career in digital communications. Right. So uh, my journey. So before let uh, before I start, let me just share um, some of my past experiences and how my roles as Marcom has evolved. I uh, began my career uh, in healthcare marketing for about fifteen years ago. I was first with uh, KPJ Healthcare, heading the PR and marketing department for one of the hospitals. Um, my role was mainly in key account management. However, I did a little bit of media relations, events, and also international marketing. So after about three years uh, at KPJ, I was offered as PR and composition at Glendicus Kuala Lumpur, where my roles focus on um, corporate communications and media relations. During uh, my time at Glendicus, I pioneered many initiatives, which some are still continuing today. I spent good seven years at Glendicus before I moved and joined uh, Davita. Um, it is a US-based company specializing in kidney care. Uh, I was uh, the head of marketing and communication. I crafted the company's Markham strategy, including advertising, digital communications, um, creative campaigns, as well as the uh, business growth strategy. I was at Davita for about Four years, yeah, until um, an offer came to lead the group marketing and communications department at Aurelius Healthcare. So the company was established back in 2019 by Dr. Amir Firdaus Abdullah. So he was formerly the CEO of Glenicals Kuala Lumpur before moving up to group level at Pantai Holdings. 
um, as the regional COO. He then spent for about two and a half years in Abu Dhabi, uh, managing more than uh, 100 hospitals under BPS Healthcare. And in September last year, we acquired our first hospital for the group, um, or Gilles Hospital Nilai, or formerly known as Nilai Medical Center. And our, um, our second hospital is currently being built in Alosta, and it is um, targeted to be in operation uh, by, I would say, Q2 next year. Yep, and, uh, okay, so, as the Marcom landscape has evolved since I started my career 20 years ago, so have my, uh, my roles and responsibilities. So this, what, what you can see here, this is the main list of what I do in Aurelius. And most of, um, the, most of these are exhibited via digital. And uh, you know, unlike those days, we relied so much on traditional marketing to communicate with the target audience. Our medium and resources were limited compared to what we have now and digital marketing has grown exponentially. And recently, I had the opportunity to judge Marketing Excellence Award 2021. Um, to me, it was an exciting experience in which I was able to assess marketing campaigns, great marketing campaigns of big companies. And what I can say here is 100% um, of the campaigns that I evaluated, um, they use digital com as the medium, the, as the medium to reach their target audience, uh, and some were really, really good. And I wish for their success in bringing back the awards. Right. Okay. Pursuing career in digital communication. So we realize that with um, the pandemic and movement restrictions, consumers were forced to change their behaviors. Digital marketing is now a growth engine for many companies across a variety of sectors, including healthcare, right? So it is clearly the winner here. And we can see that the demand in digital marketing has grown rapidly. So I believe the reason you're here today is that you have thought about pursuing your career in digital communications. So let's see, what are the opportunities lie ahead of you in terms of digital marketing? And what can you do? Um, there are a few areas you can venture into. First, um, you can work with the corporates or the brand itself in managing digital platforms and strategies, or you can work um, in digital marketing agencies, managing clients' digital strategy. Um, another thing, um, you can probably, you can start with freelancing. There are many areas that you can venture into, like content writing, designing, or even managing um, social media platforms. Um, lastly, you can start your own business uh, by offering digital uh, comm services to your clients. And now, so let us explore if a career in digital comm is for you, right? Before we start, so first let's define communication in general, and then we go into digital communications, right? Communication is more diverse than ever. It can be a personal discussion with family, friends, or colleagues, or speaking to a large crowd. But what does it mean to a business? It is an art of communicating your brand messages to the target audience using multiple channels. And what are the channels, right? So we have first face-to-face. So we have face-to-face -face when we want to be persuasive, deliver bad or sensitive news, or share personal info. Telephone, when face-to-face -face interaction is not necessary, but needs immediate response, right? And text, we do this all the time. So simple communication, uh, and when written record is necessary, but email is not available or uh, not appropriate. Right, and we use email. So usually it's used for official communications when a memo or letter is not necessary. We do video con conferencing, you know, we do this a lot since the pandemic and we are still doing it now. Letter is used for um, communicating to an external organization. 
Memo usually is used for internal communication and we have forum to share your ideas or knowledge with wide audience, right? And what is digital communication? Now, when I was, uh, I was 16, right? When I was first accessed the internet and that was about mm, 26 years ago, right? So my dad uh, introduced it to us. He was one of the first in Langkawi who had an internet connection back then. Um, he was also the president of the Langkawi International uh, Internet User Group. Yeah, uh, they had this group back then. Uh, and I still remember how each of us, we got only one hour a day on the internet. But even that was underutilized because we didn't quite understand how it worked, what to look for. And then um, later on, he started introducing the chat platform to us, the MIRC, the Perch, and so forth. And that's when, uh, that's when I got hooked. Um, I was so excited. You know, I made new friends, uh, new friends from all over the world. Personal homepage was trending at that time. Um, well, I had a couple of them. I created and published them using Netscape Navigator. And it is so much different now. It has evolved uh, and still evolving as we speak. Most of us rely on the internet and what it has to offer. People are becoming more creative with the platforms and the content. So what is digital communications? It is the ability to create and deliver communication in different kinds of media, such as we have website, emails, social media, instant messaging, video, and audio. And these are some of the foundation skills for most careers in Marcom today, right? And uh, why is it important for businesses? Trend, it is the current trend and also trend of the future. It connects the brand with customers and it is effective across all industry. It allows business to target their ideal customers with much wider reach as compared to traditional marketing. Cost effective, it is the most cost effective way to market businesses, you know, it brings high revenue with little investment. And the most important thing is, you know, in, in marketing, we always talk about KPI, you know, and ROI. So it is the most measurable form of marketing. The audience um, reach and conversion can be easily monitored. Right, okay. So let's take a look at the digital overview in Malaysia. Um, so what do the numbers, uh, numbers tell us in terms of digital, digital landscape in Malaysia? So with a population for about 32.6 million in Malaysia, there are about 40 million mobile connections and 84.2% of the population are internet users with 86% active on social media. These numbers are high, right? And here you go. So on average, Malaysians spend more than a total of nine hours on the internet, about three hours on social media, simply because the platform offer a wide variety of things to do. Some people will look up the recipes, cooking tips, find inspiration for what to wear, or um, check in on their friends. So whether we like it or not, social media has a powerful influence on our daily activities. It is somehow shaped our behavior and that can affect what we buy, things we like and dislike and event and places we choose to visit. So the time that people spend on social media become important when we know how to take good advantage of it to generate revenue for the business as digital communication uh, platforms will keep adding and growing. It is also good that we learn some basic knowledge to kickstart our career in this field. So digital communication syllabus. So digital marketing uh, um, as a course is gaining immense popularity with everyone is getting curious about the tools and techniques 
um, reuse of this unique form of marketing. The industry is booming with digital marketing jobs for freshers. So pursuing a program in this field will give you a greater advantage to secure a job as a marketeer. So what will you learn? You know, in, uh, when, when you go into digital communications. So these are some of the um, syllabus available for digital marketing courses. There are many more that you can learn uh, when you en enroll yourself with this course, right? Okay, so we talk about the skill set. Besides the hard skill that you learn during your courses, it is also important that you have. Um, you know, this kind of self, um, soft skills. Creativity, it's your ability to think out of the box um, to enable you to solve problems in a new or different ways. Writing skills, this is absolutely an important part of communication. A good and effective writer is able to distill complex ideas and thoughts into clear and simple language that can be understood by the audience. Critical thinking. So it is important for you to analyze the situation before making decisions and come up with a good solution. Data analysis. Digital communication is all about data. So we should be able to collect and analyze the data and translate it into useful information that can be used for your marketing campaigns problem solving skills, the ability to handle difficult or unexpected situation effectively without any impediments. Research, it's a must guys, you know, it helps you, it helps you to have a better understanding of a specific um, topic for your campaigns. And lastly, attention to details because um, this involves looking closely at your uh, work to identify and correct errors before your work goes live. And what are the tools? So um, also to become a digital marketer, here are some of the platforms or tools that you need to be familiar with and know how and why, uh, when to use them. So we have social media platform, design tools, um, analytic tools, email marketing tools, and so forth, right? And, um, okay, so there are definitely more jobs available um, than what I've listed here. Um, there are only some, this, these are only some of the example of job opportunities in digital marketing. Uh, before you start your digital marketing journey, there are a few important questions uh, that you should ask yourself in order to provide you with a clear indication of what you should focus on. First, what's your passion? Second, are you a team player? Third, what are the specific topics in digital marketing you like the most? Can you, the fourth one, can you multitask or do you prefer to focus only on one thing? And the fifth, what are your strengths and weaknesses? So once you have all the answers, you should be able to narrow down your choices and select a job that suits you. And lastly, you must be wondering how much would you make if you were to start a career in digital marketing? So um, this figure here, uh, what you can see is just the average salary for an entry level. Right, so on average, um, you know, this is what you will get on a monthly basis, about 2009. Um, so you're thinking, can you make more? Certainly, what you need to do is just need to invest your time and a little bit of money to learn those skills that I mentioned earlier. And most importantly, have the right attitude at work as it will reflect on what you do and make you more um, a, product, uh, a productive employee. Yeah. So that's all. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adeline. Okay, guys, so I hope that was really fantastic. Now, without waiting um, any longer, let's start uh, picking up all the questions that we have. Um, first and foremost, um, I think um, some of the questions that I can see popping up basically ask um, the questions about what are the career opportunities in digital comms. And I think you had highlighted it um, in a very detailed manner. Um, what are the career path or what are the basically um, the basic job roles that um, you should be able to master in talking about the scope of digital comms, you know, from graphic designers, uh, copywriters, and so on. So let me um, have a, a quick question from one of our uh, participants that says, how do you find uh, digital comms um, important uh, to a company, especially in startups. Now, it's very interesting because I know that uh, our audience today are um, so, uh, comprises of students of uh, secondary schools, higher education uh, students. So I'm sure that most of these, um, um, most of our participants, most or likely has doubled into startups. And some of startups are so small, um, perhaps they are multitasking in doing either the technical bit of the company, including the comms. So I think perhaps you can share why they should really focus on digital comms as a reflection to their brand, Ms. Adeline. Right. As a startup, if, um, either you are a startup or a big corporation, digital communication plays an important role in your business. You know, you get to reach out to your target audience easily you know, you can pick and choose. You know, let's say, for example, you have you, you want to do a Facebook ad, right? So you can pick and choose your target audience, you know, the age range, mm. the um, vicinity, um, you know, where this person live and the interest that can be done easily. Whereas, okay, let's say, for example, we go for the traditional uh, way of marketing, the billboards or the newspaper, you know, only people from that area able to see your um, advertisement as compared to mm -hmm. um, digital comp. So better still, if you're a startup, you want to reach out to your target audience, yeah, use um, Facebook because in Malaysia, mm -hmm. number one uh, platform that we use um, is actually, uh, first is YouTube, second is Facebook, that is in Instagram. So we are not, even though, um, you know, other countries, they are so into Twitter, uh, mm -hmm. but Malaysia, not so no, so we we are um, um, only these three platform that we are really um, focusing on right now. Yeah. I see. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, if I think you were very um, you did a very good job, Miss Adeline, of explaining um, what are the roles um, or the type of job scopes um, when it comes in digital comms. But let's yeah. go way back to basic way back to what are the skill set that one's required to be in comms because most of my um, colleagues um, always say that, um, oh, in terms of attitude or character, I'm such an introvert. I can't speak very well. I'm shy in meeting people. I don't think I should be in comms. What do you think? Uh, well, you can be an introvert and still be in com. That is not a problem here because you know you can be uh, because there are various uh, scopes in comms. Um, you can do designing, you can mm -hmm. do animation, you know, and then let the extrovert go out and meet clients. You know, the, the key account managers let them go out and meet clients, and you do the technical part. You know, you can uh, you know you know you can hit the cyber security. So it is also part of digital communication, right? You know, the security, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, uh, taking care of the PDPA of your audience and all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. why not? I would say. Okay. Hmm. Ah, um, I think uh, I'm getting one question that I think is quite interesting. Um, one is asking, uh, what is your opinion? the future of digital comms, especially with regards to um, the career for the youth. Now, what I will um, try to contextually put this uh, question, um, I think nowadays we are in a phase where it is in the endemic. 
um, IR 4.0 um, kind of jobs of the future, a lot of people are scared that their uh, chosen career path uh, will be obsolete, especially with the technology these days. Let me just phrase it in a way where I was from broadcast media. Um, and in my experience to a point where if you are the technical team, whether it's the audio or the cameraman, when all these audio equipments driven by technology become so user-friendly, that does not, uh, it becomes them obsolete because then you, you won't really require an actual person operating those machines because, you know, um, to a point where we can get robots to handle those machines. So will digital com comes to a point where it becomes obsolete in the future? Ms. Adeline? I, I wouldn't think so uh, because um, I think this career would last for about uh, 30, 40 years. To, uh, you know, to come because, um, yeah, um, the technology is so advanced now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we speak, you know, it keeps on adding and improving. And we need human for that, you know, um, on the creative side, on the, um, you know, thinking out of the box um, ideas, campaigns on what we want to do. We need human for that. Um, and, Even, and digital platform is just the tools that we used and correct. should be using in a very smart way and efficient way. Yes, correct, correct. Yeah, because, um, you know, at the end of the day, we want to see a human being rather than, you know, animation or we want to deal with human being rather than we want to, to deal with robots, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think to all our um, audience, uh, the same questions about, you know, the comms being not obsolete um, have been answered. And one, Mama Amal Iskandar is asking me, I know what advantage for learning the digital comms to make my future become more success. Um, very interesting. Why should we learn digital comms? Uh, maybe as a foundation in whatever career path you choose afterwards to make it more successful. I can answer because I'm comms because it's networking skills. However, Ms. Adeline, you have more experience other than the way you speak. What is the X factor when you have comms or digital comms as your foundation? And then you can, I'm sure, do any types of career that you want. Yeah, so digital comm is all about technology. We are going, um, you know, aggressively towards, um, you know, technology. Um, AI, you know, AI comes in, um, I think um, most company now are into AI now. Correct. Even healthcare, even healthcare. So mm -hmm. we are talking about AI in healthcare right now. Mm -hmm. So let's say if you are a um, radio radiographer, you know, in, um, in a hospital, Mm -hmm. You know, to have that knowledge, you know, will give you an advantage on how you would do your probably your reporting, you know, on your uh, patient's case. Um, so it is an advantage for you if you have um, this kind of knowledge in whatever industry you are in right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. be it finance, uh, you know, engineering. Yeah, it is an advantage. Right. Okay. Um, I think we had a chit chat for your uh, for all the participants' um, information. We had a chit chat even before we start our live session about um, sometimes a lot of people um, doesn't get the gist of digital comms, whether or not it's something that is curated um, into that degree or a diploma that you are currently taking in your higher education. Um, so, Ms. Ali, you were sharing with us. Um, that it's essential to continuously improve yourself through a lot of those um, certificate um, in terms of uh, the uh, short, uh, uh, short uh, training uh, programs yeah. that you should be taking to improve yourself if you really want to be um, really good at digital comms, really into the latest um, technology, really understand the data and strategy behind it. Maybe you can share how do this, uh, this the our audience today get all this information? Um, okay, so you have to be on the feet all the time, you know, in terms of um, digital communication, right? Mm -hmm. Because it the, the the changing is very fast. It is a fast uh, fast paced um, 
uh, industry for digital communication. So there are a lot of um, academies um, out the institutions out there, you know, offering short courses. Because if you're talking about digital uh, communication, um, so far I have not seen a, a very specific digital marketing or digital comm um, courses um, is being offered at the university level. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, they do have, you know, let's say for example, uh, in uh, UM, they have media studies, so it's very general. Uh, in UKM, they have uh, media communication, um, also general. But it's good for you to have this as um, a foundation and then you major yourself into um, digital marketing or digital communication by taking all these short courses at, um, you know, for example, um, just, just to name uh, one good academy that I know is Next Academy. They are offering 12-week um, online courses on digital marketing. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going back to reading your slides where when you've broken down the career opportunities um, in uh, digital comms, um, I really wanted to ask you, um, when you have all these team members, mm -hmm. and let's say the students, uh, the audience today would like to go one level up and sort of look at digital comms from a strategic level. Because then we'll be talking about data. We'll be talking about analyzing um, what platform is the best for you to um, invest in, invest in terms of your brand awareness campaign. And then knowing this data will justify why you're spending money or why you're creating certain content. Um, perhaps you can elaborate a little bit more because I think the participants out there, other than knowing that, yes, you, you should be into social media, copywriting, but then let's go one level up and hey, how, what's the formula to really like, um, you know, get your brand out there, understand the data and optimize your advertising efficiently? Yes, correct. So um, digital communication is all about doing research. You know, um, research is very important. I think I mentioned it earlier, you know, research is a must, you know, for you to understand your target audience. Mm -hmm. And with that data that you have, that's when you sit down and brainstorm with the team, you know, okay, mm -hmm. so this is what the data that we have, um, you know, um, audience from age, um, for example, 18 to 25, so they are into, um, you know, A, for example, uh, and then what should we do, how do we tackle them, you know, what are the platform that they use, um, so they are, are they um, using what, what kind of devices that you so that we, when we, you know, create a, a campaign um, on digital um, platform, so we can um, create it according to uh, what kind of devices that they use, whether it's uh, mostly they use uh, mobile phones or they use laptop, uh, tablets and so forth. And um, with this data, you know, um, you know, you, you can never go wrong, you know, because mm -hmm. you know your audience and you know what they need. Um, I think most businesses, um, they are uh, coming up with campaigns um, rather than addressing the issues, addressing the problem, mm -hmm. they are um, um, creating it out of, um, I would say, like, short sendiri, you know? Yeah, uh, So we should... Yeah, so we should avoid that. Understand um, the needs of the target audience, mm -hmm. then, you know, you uh, move up from there. Yeah. I, I would like to add on to that because one of, your, uh, one of the job role that you said is um, relevant to being in digital comms is content strategies. If Correct. we go one further back and we say that to be in comms, you have to understand what the consumer needs, you have to understand the psychology of what the consumer needs. Can we also say to all the participants out there, if you have a background in psychology or even understanding what, how, how does a consumer spend? How does a consumer um, process information, colors, the type of writing, it will really help them to be successful if they were to choose comms as their career path? 
Yes, I agree with you 100, 101%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, when you are, when, let's say, for example, you know, you study psychology, you know, you understand the human behavior, mm -hmm. you understand, um, you know, the needs um, and everything. So um, by having that kind of background, it will be a great, uh, you know, a platform and foundation for you to, you know, to be the a strategist. You know, mm -hmm. uh, by by understanding um, the needs of your audience, because not everybody is artistic, right? Yes. Um, so those who have um, you know um, art artistic traits, so you can go into um, designing. You know, you have um, you know graphic designer, you have two uh, D, three D animator. But yeah. it's the content strategies who understand what the consumer wants. We need to guide uh, the graphic designer. We need to guide in, in the, the storytelling. Yeah. Exactly. So, so that's why this is actually a team player. I mean, a, a, a teamwork. Team work. Mm -hmm. It's a teamwork. You know, you can't be working alone and, and you know, come up with everything. You know, um, you, you, you can't be the the um, the brain to, to come up with the um, ideas and then the hand to do the um, designing. Um, no, um, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Comp is all about teamwork. Teamwork. Um, uh, let's answer a question from Najib Muhammad Noor. Hi, right. Miss Adeline. Can I know, is there a chance for a student who has a diploma in digital communication? Um, oh, sorry, I think, uh, let me rephrase that. I think he has, um, a, 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 he's studying IT. Okay. So from right. IT, he wanted to know whether or not there's a chance for him who has a diploma in IT to jump into uh, digital communication or digital marketing. I think it was a sort of like a, um, a question that should I stay in IT or should I do digital marketing or digital comms? Definitely. Um, once you're in IT, it's already a digital communication, you know, mm -hmm. but... but you know, it's either you want to um, to um, go into the back end of uh, the the system or the front end, right? So, but yeah, then yeah. you have interest in, um, like I said, uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, you know, you have to ask yourself questions. You know, what do you really like? Do you like the technical stuff, um, or you like the creative? Um, uh, the creative part, part of being in the, of, uh, the uh, industry, uh, yeah, basically. Digital form. So if you, uh, if you like the creative part, you know, and you're now you're having um, digit, uh, sorry, diploma in IT, that is um, a strong foundation already. So that, and, and you know how the, the technical part works, right? And then, yeah, learn about, you know, um, uh, some of the uh, softwares, you know, tools for mm. designing. For example, you know, yep. you have um, yep. Illustrator, um, photo, Photoshop, InDesign, and all that. Yeah. And then now it's even, it, it's easier. You know, people make our life easier. Uh, I think we have what? Can, uh, Canva. Canva. <laughs> Canva. So Canva is very, very, uh, so it's, it's, it's mainly for um, a beginner. Yes, uh, junior you know, levels to just... start designing. Correct, correct. Yeah. So, so you can just, you know, pick and choose what are the um, items you need, what are the graphics you need for your posters or for your posts, and then you can just, you know, arrange it nicely, Ta-da! and then you can post yeah. it. Yeah. Um, we received another question. It's quite interesting. I think he is a student in secondary mm -hmm. school. Um, so Mr. Anonymous asked, what is your suggestion for students who is in secondary school that is interested in digital comms? Um, how do they start? So I guess um, um, the first bit uh, is to answer that is for SPM leavers, where should you start? Should you go directly to taking a, um, a mass comm, uh, a degree in mass comm, or as you mentioned, try to find a more specific um, course if there is out there who offers digital or it is uh, learning should be something that just not fits to higher education because even while working you are you learning. also have opportunities to upgrade yourself 
as as we mentioned before, short term courses. I think these to answer the uh, the anonymous uh, attendee who ask, and I'm sure you are an SPM event, you know, trying to to trying to choose which course to take now. Yeah. Um. Again, it all depends. You know. Um. What if if you want to go straight into digital uh marketing? Yeah. Yes, there are some uh, short courses on digital marketing, but uh, I would suggest for you to take a diploma, um, yeah, diploma in in communications, diploma in you know there, there are diploma in corporate communications and so forth, so that you understand the whole um, the whole world of communication, right? Mm -hmm. So because when we talk when you go into digital communications. Um, if you go straight into the short courses, right? So you you only learn about this bit, but when in real life, in work environment, there are more to it. So it's best that you take um you know, uh, go for uh, a diploma course in uh, communications, in mass com, or even in journalism, uh, just to understand what is communication all about. Then. Um, you can you know, uh, sub-specialize in um, digital marketing. So in, under digital marketing, they have courses in SEO, SEM, uh, you know, uh, web uh, develop, uh, development and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so I think one of our anonymous guests is asking because whether digital comms can help him because he um, is focusing or he's leaning towards being in a government servant, mostly to become a police officer, how does digital comms work? I think just to let everyone know, even um, our PDRM has a comms department because it's all about conveying the right message to okay. their target audience, even if it's to the mass market. Um, so. I think so. He's asking which course, if you know, he's leaning into digital comms, but he still wants to be like, example, a government servant. You can. So, if you want to be in PDRM, so do you want to be on the field or you want to be, you know, uh, in the office setup? Uh, because you know, uh, in the office setup, yeah, um, there are many departments also, right? Like, so they have like comms, they have IT, they have finance that they have legal and all that yeah so if you if you want to be uh you know in the office environment under pdrm mm -hmm. yes uh, and 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 uh, you know uh, doing digital comp for the pdrm mm -hmm. you can definitely I, I think one thing um maybe um my advice as well is that if you can concur with me to all the um you know um students out there one of the things I think is very important if you are in comms that covers marketing, sales, branding, or PR, is whichever um, organization you are in, I think regardless of whether it's government or private, is to first understand its brand, its IP, its intellectual property, then it's the target audience. Irregardless, you are, I think most organizations will have a comms department. Correct. But such different target audience, such different way of telling stories to ensure that your brand out there gets noticed. So it's all about, as you say, research has to be backed up by data. And when you make the decision, go back to understanding your target audience. Yes. I can summarize in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I totally agree with you. So, um, yeah, research, research, research. It is very important, you know. Uh, then, because in whatever uh, business that you're in, you know, or any organization, you interact with people, you interact with your target audience. How do you interact with like target audience is very, very important, right? Um, you know, uh, so we don't want to make a blunder, you know, you know, saying things that we shouldn't be saying on yeah. digital platform. It can go viral. I think you know, part of the we thing, want. yeah, part of the thing that I think everybody in comms, in just uh, mass comms or PR, we learn is PR crisis. Meaning, Correct. how do you handle a public relation crisis? Because you can have 
10 things fantastic about your brand, but one mistake, one negative um, mistake or comment or uh, an unsatisfied client who just um, is upset about your product or your brand just ruins the hard work, right? Yes, yes. So I think yeah. a lot of, 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 of our viewers today, I think when talking about comms, about promoting your brand out there, it's so important to uh, think before you do that posting, think before you, you, you react. Uh, yeah, right? To, to, think to, before to, you to do that posting. Things, yeah. Think before you... Um, to, to an, I think I was even talking to Miss Adeline when we talked about um, digital platforms, um, we understand that once we get the formula right in terms of well, let's advertise this here and here, but then you have a spin-off of using social media influencers. Do you have, um, I, and most brands, either be a small uh, startup to a big brand, will most or less likely associate themselves with social media influencers. So what's your take on that? Good, bad, um, um, make the right decision, choose the right, is there a formula or or sort of like um, a way for us to kind of do that campaign, but still be smart and, you know, not make the mistakes of, I don't know, choosing the wrong influences and so on. Yeah, again, research, right? So it will go back to research, you know. Um, the research is important so that you know uh, the interest of your target audience, mm -hmm. you know, before choosing uh, an influencer. Um, having an influencer for your campaigns is a quick win. You can leverage on their popularity, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because, you know, they can uh, cross sharing or cross promote your campaigns. But then again, who you pick as an influencer is very, very important. So let's say your, your product caters to certain group of people, but you don't want to take someone out of this group to be your influencer, right? So, um, yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm not against, uh, you know, working with influencers. I have worked uh, with uh, many influencers uh, before, but then um, those that you pick has got to be the right uh, for your uh, brand so that they can carry the same message um, mm. as your brand. So it has got to be the same uh, tone of voice um, for your brand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you, Miss Adelinda. I think um, we are, um, I think most of the questions uh, we have already answered. And uh, I think before I would like to um, basically say goodbye to you, I would like to ask if you can support our event today, our session today, our audience today, to sort of summarize. It's fantastic when you know we see you transform into a corporate figure. I know you way back. It's fantastic because you were telling us that your father was the president of the Internet Club. My father yeah. was the, president, <laughs> the first president of Langkawi Toastmaster Club. And, yeah. and having met your parents and somehow having seen his character in you is that you are such a people's person. And perhaps with your experience uh, in, in uh, Komst, in the corporate uh, industry, what is the advice you can share to our audience? What are the set of skills or that, that set of attitude that you should have to get you going in comms? Okay, so being in, uh, I'm, I'm not saying, not, not just digital communication. When you work, you know, you have to do the right thing, right? You have you need to have the right attitude, um, so that is a very important uh, you know important um, advice that I would give to to the uh, youth right. And um, for digital communications, you know it can be fun. It is exciting uh, if you have the passion for it. So do more research and listen to some of the top digital experts. Uh, for example. Gary V. So if you have heard of Gary V, if you have not heard of Gary mm -hmm. V, go and Google him. So he has excellent tips and advice for you. So if you would like to uh, pave your uh, pave your path in digital communication, mm -hmm. you know, listen to the experts. Uh, and um, also, um, like 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 what I mentioned earlier, have the right attitude. Yeah. 
have the right That's... attitude and a degree in passion. Degree, yeah, I mentioned that earlier. Degree yes, in passion. Did. You have, you the have... word of the day, the word of the day, degree in passion. Thank you, thank you very yeah. much. So, um, before I let you go, let me just quickly summarize my understanding of um, your tips and uh, your guidance today for all out there. Be it uh, in whatever courses that you are now, digital comms is one of the most in-demand careers because right. you have the technology, you, uh, you have the team players, but you have to have the heart behind it. Whether you are the introvert who likes to do graphic design or you are the creative storyteller, um, it's all, but it goes back to all understanding your consumer needs. And one thing I really like from your presentation was that you, when you say take short courses, um, even learn while you're on the job, meaning that one of the set skills that I do hope all of you, the audience out there, have is to never stop learning. Never ever stop learning. Wherever you are, which position you are, which company you are, never stop stop learning even if you're out from the school um, always take the opportunity to read to have a mentor Ms. Adeline and I think um, to just um, continuously learn and upgrade yourself in order to know that uh, you have a sort of like a, a, a future proof career because I mean most as I mentioned I was so worried about whether the career will be obsolete but in order to do that we have to jump on the bandwagon, continuously learn and be at the forefront instead of so complacent in what I in, I guess, in, one my, yeah, in my yeah, two yeah, cents. So I, I'm summarizing your entire presentations and your tips and guidance. Correct, correct. Yeah, because digital com is, is, uh, is an ever-changing um, world, right? So mm -hmm. every minute of the day, you know, uh, the algorithm is changing mm -hmm. every day. Yeah, and you know some some of these things we could learn from the youth. You know, you know sometimes we are already in this level. You know, but then when we want to reach out to the youth, we gotta learn. We we gotta listen to them. You know, yes. what do they like? Uh, what I'm sure you have this conversation with your sixteen year old son. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know what are they into currently? Mm. Uh, and. You know, let's say if you are targeting the, the this kind of um, audience, they are into games, and then how do you, you know, create a campaign around their interests? So mm -hmm. that's very important. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It was nice takeaway as the ending of conversation that sometimes understanding your consumer needs, it doesn't need to be a consumer who knows how to spend. It can be a consumer who's you know as young as you know a particular age when they can start already enjoying whether TV, whether it's the internet, and so forth. All right. Thank you, Miss Adeline. Um, to all the participants, thank you very much. I'm Yasmin, and I do hope you'll join us for the next JYC session. I guess I'll pass it to my colleague, who are also the lovely lady in comms. Uh, we can see all ladies in comms, yeah? But I tell you, my tech yeah. team are, are guys. really fantastic guys. Uh, you're going to take a photo of them afterwards. So over to you, Iman. Thank you for the insightful session, Miss Adeline and Miss Yasmin. So with that, I would like to thank everyone here for being with us today. I am sure all the participants have gained useful knowledge from our session today. So for those who might have missed today's session, write not as we will upload it on our YouTube channel. Before I end this, I would like to request Miss Adeline and Miss Yasmin to stay still as we are going to have a quick photo op session. Okay, so I believe we are good to go. Um, technical ready? In yes, my... well, all of our strong, fantastic guys who is the backbone of today's event. Smile, one, two, three. All right, can we have another one? Technical ready? In three, two, one. All right, fantastic. So stay tuned for our next webinar series and follow us on our social media, Elias Edu City Official for YouTube, 
Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok for any updates from us. Do turn on your notification for our upcoming events and webinars by EduCity. Till then, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you in the next webinar. EduCity, jaga kita. Bye!